Valley of Screams. Shuhei Hisagi and Tessai were both unaware that when a Tenkai Ketchu was operating on its own, it automatically set coordinates to the center of its effective radius. In this case, Hisagi had been transported to an indoor structure not much different to any in the Soul Society. This is... a Valley of Screams? Doesn't feel like much time has passed. Well, I guess that's because the flow of time in the Don Guy's weird, so I can't use it as a standard to judge by. There was no source for outside light in the building, and the room was not lit by firefly vines, but by lighting equipment that was also used by the Department of Research and Development. Why does this place have... Well, this definitely has got to be the Valley of Streams. Right? He thought that he might not have actually been transported correctly, and had instead drifted to somewhere else in the Soul Society, but he sensed that the concentration of Reishi in the atmosphere was different, and when he probed the spiritual pressure, he felt something large approaching from somewhere far below him. Below? Am I on a higher floor? But wait, wait! Is that Captain Zaraki's spiritual pressure? So that means the Soul Society had made a move. I see. Since my message to request Gente Kaijo was cut off... Okay, but are Valley of Screams really that easy to find? They might have captured members of the religious group and looked into it themselves. It'd be a piece of cake for Captain Kurochsuchi if he had a sample of one of those devices. But I guess a lot of time really has passed. Well, if Captain Zaraki is here, I guess I don't have to worry about fighting. Anyway, I've got to meet up with him and tell someone about Mr. Urahara. He tried to use his soul pager, but naturally it was still blocked from communicating with the Serete. Thinking that he needed to join with the others, he probed his surroundings and guessed he was in a tall tower based on how far below Zaraki's spiritual pressure was. Where's the door? Huh? What the hell is that? At that point, Hisagi realized that what he at first thought was a pillar was in fact a large cylindrical glass case installed on some sort of apparatus. This transport vessel was currently empty, and didn't seem to be in operation, despite being connected all over with electrodes and reishi tubing. When I interviewed the Department of Research and Development, I saw something just like that. Hisagi examined the case to figure out what it was, but he didn't find any written information or any data at all that indicated what it might be. <sighs> Damn it. If I could just get in contact with Akon, maybe I should just break the thing. Uh, but if I break it, it might be one of those things that can't be undone. Oh, that's supposed to be my throne. Huh? I'd appreciate it if you did not break it if possible, since I wouldn't have anywhere else in this castle to rest if you did. Yes, that's for sure. You! I'm Hikone Ubuginu. Um, and you're Shuhei Hisagi, aren't you? Thank you so much for before. What is this? This kid's spiritual pressure is making me... Was the strange spiritual pressure I've been feeling just his? The room is filled with it. But why are you here, Mr. Hisagi? Oh, uh, I'm... Oh! Did Lord Tokanata call you? If you're his guest, then please let me be your host to the best of my abilities. Uh, Tokanata Sunayashiro is here? Yes, he's down below right now. Would you like to go greet him? Uh, he, he, he is? Hikone's openness made Hisagi hesitate, and vaguely apprehensive, but he steeled himself, and he then noticed that Hikone's spiritual pressure had transformed since they had last met at the pharmacy. The hollow had become more pronounced, and the other varieties had increased in response to that. This kid was dangerous before, but this spiritual pressure is on a completely different level now. I've never been so intimidated by a child before. Hey. Yes, what is it? Do you know what Tokanada's trying to do? You mean Lord Tokanada? I don't understand complicated things so much. But if Lord Tokanada is doing it, I think it's the right thing to do. That's not something you should say so lightly. Huh? Why is that? Just think for yourself for a minute. That Tokanada guy could be wrong about some things, right? Because there isn't a person in this world who's perfect. What is it that Lord Tokanada could be wrong about? Oh, well, that's... From whose perspective does it seem like he's wrong? Huh? Well, you know, I can't say that it's the whole world, but in the soul society and the world of the living. I mean, to each of the societies and those places, Tokanata would look wrong to them. I see. In that case, I don't think he's wrong to me. What? For me, my whole world is what Lord Tokanata gave me. 
I don't know of any other worlds, but there's no reason for me to know of them in the first place, is there? But that's- Even if Lord Tokanata was doing something that everyone in the world thought was wrong, it wouldn't be wrong to me. Stop. For example, even if everyone else says Lord Tokanata's a bad person, to me, Lord Tokanata is justice. Yes. Stop it! I'm sorry. Did I do something to upset you, Mr. Hisagi? No. Sorry for yelling. You just shouldn't speak about justice so lightly. Huh? Why not? Lord Tokanata once told me that all the Soul Reapers in the Soul Society are principled people who fight for the sake of justice. Oh, but of course, I'm not a court guard Soul Reaper, so is that why I can't talk about justice? That's not the issue. There isn't just one kind of justice. You can't assume that the justice that Tokanata speaks of is the same that the Soul Reapers mean. Yes, Lord Tokanata did say that. That's why he and I might have to fight all the Soul Reapers soon. Say that again? Since it seems like everyone is finally here, I think that Lord Tokanata is calling for me. I'm very sorry that I wasn't able to give you a proper reception, Mr. Hisagi. Hikone bowed their head and tried to leave. Wait! Why do you have to fight? The Soul Reapers aren't your enemies! You don't have any reason to fight them! If Lord Tokanata says that all the Soul Reapers are enemies, then I have lots of reasons to fight them. Isn't it enough of a reason to fight if our justices are different? Killing each other isn't the only answer! To start with, Kenpachi Zaraki is one of the people you're saying you want to fight, and he's a captain. He doesn't care if you're a kid. He isn't the kind of guy to just hold back against a strong opponent. It's just my impression here, but I think you're probably pretty strong. But even so, if you do fight them, you'll end up dead. Will I? You will. So... Then I will fight and I will die for Lord Tokanata. Because no matter what happens, if I can't live up to his expectations, then there isn't any value in my being alive. You idiot! Don't say that you're going to die, or that your life has no meaning so easily. I'm really sorry. It seems like I really do just make people angry. Don't apologize, dammit. It's not your fault. I know that. Bakudo number 63. Sajo Sabaku. Huh? Chains of light created from Reishi wrapped around Hikone and restrained them. Sorry. I think I'm Tokunata Sunayashiro's enemy. But that doesn't make you my enemy. You wait here. I'm going to have a talk with this Tokunata guy. Even if it means I have to get rough with him. I'm sorry. This is hard to say, but I think that's impossible. The Bakudo chains broke into pieces and were sent flying. Though Hisagi expected that would happen, he started to put together another Kido, but Hikone's hand connected with his chest and an enormous amount of spiritual pressure flowed into him, shaking his soul chain and soul sleep. What? God! Mr. Shuhei Hisagi, you will not be able to win against me or Lord Tokanada or Miss Aura, it's impossible for you to sway anyone with brute force. Hisagi's consciousness began to fade. Wait! You can't go out there to die. I finally understand. I know what you're lacking. Uh, wait, just to... So please don't push yourself. Please take a rest here. Yes. Directly below the castle in the sky, Palace Courtyard, the Zampakto that had appeared from Tokunada's shadow had been blocked by his own Zampakto, causing the sound of dry metal to echo through the courtyard. Kage Oni, is it? It's far beyond impolite to step on the shadow of a Tsunayoshiro, you know. How troublesome. I have to fight someone who knows my abilities from the start. As Tokunada cackled, Kiraku's entire body appeared from the shadow. That bastard! He got a head start! As someone who had to patiently wait through a tedious conversation, Zaraki was clearly put in a bad mood. He leapt forward to knock Kiraku aside and face Tokunada on his own. Head Captain Kiraku might be in hot water later. The captain hates having his prey taken from him more than anyone. Hikone. As Tokunada continued to lock swords with Kiraku, an ominous spiritual pressure broke forth from the floating castle above their heads, causing everyone to momentarily freeze. Hikone's spiritual pressure had increased many times since the confrontation in the Rukangai, and despite their arrival only taking a few seconds since their name was called, to everyone standing in awe of their spiritual pressure, it felt like it had been several minutes or perhaps even hours. 
What the hell is this? Then they fell to the ground with a harsh wind, causing the surrounding air to warp from the impact. Oh, I finally performed the correct landing. I'm so happy. Lurto Kanata, I apologize for the delay. What would you have me do? Ah, uh, yes. Wait right there, Hikone. Kiraku, thanks to you, everything's finally complete. Meet Hikone Ubuginu, the next Soul King. Even if you are from one of the four great noble clans, isn't it unforgivably disrespectful to say you replaced the Rayo himself? Don't make me laugh. You know, don't you? You know what kind of being the Rayo is. And if you know that, then don't you think that in fact the most respectable thing to do would be to replace him? Are you saying you intend to make this small child a sacrifice for the Soul Society? A child who came to your aid? Oh, to Hikone our fight seems like nothing but a game. Hikone, Hikone! Look at these people before you! Yes, sir. I can even see some people I've already met. Indeed. Do you like them, Hikone? Yes, sir. They all took it very seriously when they fought me. They faced someone like me with determination, and they will become my people soon. So I have no reason not to like them. I see. That is the most important thing, Hikone. You must cherish those you love. Do not forget to offer your sincere devotion to them. Yes, sir. I won't, Lord Tokenata. However, these are my enemies, so could you kill them all for me immediately? Yes, sir, Lord Tokenata. I will put my entire being into defeating them. Hikune brightly unsheathed their Zanpakuto. Thank you very much. It finally grew to this level because of the fight you all let me have with you. Hatch and perish! Eco Miki dumb away! It let out a birthing wail, accompanied by a fierce tornado of raging, the blade swelled and formed the shape of a living creature. Compared to the giant monster from earlier, this one was smaller in size, but still slightly larger than a house, and its form gave off the impression that it was designed for killing. Its spiritual pressure had also become even more concentrated. Hikone stood on top of it. I am so happy that I got to meet you all. After I kill you, I'll never forget the memories we shared. Thank you so much! Hikone ran Blute Arterie through their hands and created a bow out of Reishi, only to use it to shoot a condensed Sarah. For real? They're such a piece of work, jeez. Narrowly avoiding the attack, the Quincy's realized that the hollow Reishi contained in the hour was more potent than normal and a single direct hit would kill them. Seems strange. He has the body of an Atuchas, but his spiritual pressure is on Vasto Lore level. No. It would be pretty high even among the Arankars. Based on what he said, it seems he would be an ancient Menos that lived during Baragon's time. Dry! Pantera! Hunt! Tiberon! Pray! Gamuza! A zephyr of spiritual pressure blew around them and struck Ikomiki Domoe's body like a whirlwind. Grimjao immediately leapt at him, catching Zeraki's attention as he did, bringing a smile to his face. Oh, I see. That blue-haired bastard doesn't seem half bad. Um, Captain, I don't need to remind you that right now they're on our side, right? He is. For now. Kempachi surveyed the spiritual pressures of Tokenada, Hikone, and Ikomiki Domoe. Alright then. Which one of them's the strongest? However, as though to obstruct his evaluations, all seven of the Arankars attacked Ikomiki Domoe. Ikomiki Domoe took the brunt of the assault, but then lowered himself, and enlarged his spiritual pressure. Then, a gigantic eye opened in the middle of his body, as his entire form began to gleam. Huh? What the hell is that? I can't figure out what he's aiming for, but that sure doesn't give you a good feeling, does it? Alright, you two. Buck up. Huh? If you don't, you'll end up dead. Kempachi unsheathed his Zanpakuto and swung it down just as an immense amount of Reishi was discharged from Ikomiki Domoe. The blinding light swallowed a portion of the Valley of Screams. It wasn't truly a Cerro as much as it was a Reishi explosion, but it scattered in every direction, lifting apart the ground and sending the palace's roofs flying. Haribel rose a shield of water to dampen the damage done to the Arankars, while Nanao used Bakudo, and the Quincy's had extended their belief to its maximum to mitigate any injuries. As for Kempachi, he just cut through the explosion. Well, that sure was close. You've got some nerve. 
Kiraku, who had been hiding in the shadows, slashed at Tokenada while he wondered how he had been able to evade the blast, as Tokenada had not even a speck of dirt on his kimono. Oh well, it seems the gardens and estate were all for naught. I'll need to have Aura remake them later. You have another friend? Not a friend, she's simply a pawn. I don't know who they are, but my condolences to them. But, I see. Is that Zanpakuto, an erosive type? Oh, so you've noticed. Seeing Ikomiki Domoe's form, Kyoraku was able to guess at why Hikone had hollow powers. A pronounced hollow nature dwelled within Ikomiki Domoe, and by linking him with Hikone's soul, the hollow reishi was being infused into their body. Under normal circumstances, Hikone's kompaku boundaries would become unsettled and their body would have burst, but the fragments of Reo embedded within Hikone allowed them to tame the power. You've treated that child poorly. What are you intending to do with them? Now that you've felt their spiritual pressure directly, you know for certain, don't you, Kyoraku? Kyoraku did not answer and instead swung his sword again. <laughs> Tokanada dodged and smiled. They can become the Soul King. Just as Ichigo Kurosaki and Kugo Ginjo can. So you were lying when you said you didn't know much about Ginjo. You didn't believe me anyway, did you, Kyoraku? I have one more question for you. Was what you told Nanao also a lie? Hmm. Oh, you mean about her mother? Are you really sure you weren't involved in her execution? I almost wish I said that I was, but unfortunately that was the truth. I see. Too bad. Hmm. Ooh, so you made a pinky promise then. <laughs> what a close one. I don't remember telling you about that game. The pinky promise game was an ability where if either one of them lied to each other, the liar's fingers would first stop moving, then with a second lie, all the liar's bones would stop as if they had been crushed, and at a third lie, the liar would be assaulted with intense pain as if their entrails were being pierced by needles. It was a technique used against people prone to lying, or to extract information during interrogation. However, since Ohana would become upset when Kiraku made pinky promises with other people, he did not use the ability often. And of course, the drawback was that once activated, Kiraku himself also could no longer lie. I could tell what it was without even needing to see it. Aren't you underestimating me? You really should have used that ability in the Squad 1 barracks. Had you done so, you wouldn't have been so late in trying to settle things. I couldn't have drawn my sword on you, much less used my Shikai on you, before you drew my suspicions, now could I? But, following that train of thought, I was late the moment I failed to kill you. <laughs> well, that is certainly true. Oh, really now? It's quite annoying to have to tell only the truth. Oh, right. I wasn't involved in Nanao Issei's mother's execution, but I did make the suggestion that there was a possibility her daughter carried the Divine Sword and that we should torture it out of her. Kiraku's face went pale, a reaction that satisfied Tokunara. But to be honest, though, I was confident that you had it. But compared to the Suniyoshiros, you are practically a peasant. Even as a higher-ranked noble, I thought that you would get ideas in your head if I were to implicate you. And besides, don't you think the plot in which I waited to tell you until the girl is persecuted because you hid the sword and it is too late to take anything back would be so much more fun? Hmm. <laughs> don't make that face, Kyoraku, don't worry. Ginrei Kuchki squashed that proposal. That incorrigible old geezer, he acts hard, but he's really such a softy. Is that so? I need to express my gratitude to Ginrei then. Kiraku continued to swing his sword, and Tokunada received his successive attacks. What's wrong? What's with these measly swings? Putting aside Pinky Promise, you aren't using Iro Oni, Toka Oni, and Koge Okuri! Are you that frightened of my Zonpokto? Yes, I am frightened. It's quite terrifying. Hmm. What was the name of your Zonpokto again? Do you really need me to tell you? You've already looked into it and figured it out, haven't you? Well, now I know for sure based on that answer that Kuten Kyokoku isn't your Zonpokto's true name, is it? Now Tokunada's expression went blank. I'll take your silence as affirmation, since we both can't tell lies right now. I was skeptical. That your Kuten Kyokoku can send your opponent Zanpakuto's abilities flying back is certainly frightening. 
But, of course, that power seems slightly underwhelming for the Zanpakuto that the Suniyashiro family has protected for all this time. And as for the name Kuten Kyokoku, it has a similar ring to my Katen Kyokotsu, doesn't it? So I thought you might have blocked its power with a fake name, partly to spite me. It's in your nature. You planned on calling it by its real name to release its true abilities, only after we thought we had come up with a method to defeat it, didn't you? And there was only one reason you wanted to do that. You wanted to see our faces in despair. Am I wrong? <sighs> you really just cannot read the room, Kyoraku. If you already knew that much, then why not just let me have my fun? The term wet blanket was made for you. You gave me too many hints. Perhaps you were hoping to pour salt in my wound, taunting me by saying, the name Kuten Kyokoku happens to sound awfully similar to your own sword's name, don't you think? After your jig was up, was that it? You're half right. The other half was a reminder to myself not to forget my suspicion and hatred of you. Sip the world and wear the horizon. Huh. Realizing that Tokenada was performing a release command, Kiraku used Flash Step to close the distance between them and flashed at him. Kiraku didn't have the time to go through the process of Iro Oni or Taka Oni, so he simply thrust it. However, at that moment, Tokenada intentionally stepped forward and allowed himself to be stabbed by Kiraku's blade. Kiraku hadn't expected Tokenada to use his own body to block the attack, but him doing so indicated to Kiraku one thing that there was enough value in activating his Zanpakuto's abilities for Tokenada to put his life on the line. Duplicate and curtail all of creation equally, Enra Kyoten. Tokenada smiled as blood poured from his mouth and his Zanpakuto transformed. The silver blade grew bright like a mirror, and the sword's body began to radiate a light brighter than the sun, blinding Kiraku's single eye. Huh. A Zanpakuto that controls light? The extravagant blinding light momentarily robbed everyone of their judgment. However, Kiraku recovered his senses faster than the others and twisted his sword that was currently inside Tokenada. However, Tokenada went to kick Kiraku and was able to pull himself away. Yeah. Kiraku went flying, but Nanao caught him. Are you alright, Head Captain? Thank you, Nanao. That was somewhat clumsy of me, wasn't it? Kiraku looked toward Tokenada, who stood there unharmed. There was evidence of his kimono having been cut, and though there were traces of blood on his skin, there were no wounds themselves. What's wrong, Kiraku? You wanted to see it, did you not? This is my... No, this is the Sunayoshiro Zonpokuto that has been passed along from generation to generation. The eldest Zonpokuto. The one and only Enra Kyoten. And then it was not just Tokenada's wounds that were missing. The hilt that Tokenada gripped and the blade itself suddenly vanished. Cyberspace. Aura and Yukio were in a subspace that Yukio had created. Ginjo's trio had gone elsewhere, leaving only Aura and Yukio remaining. It seems that Hikone and Ikomiki Domoe are using their true power. And Lord Tokenata has spoken his Zanpakuto's true name. Your spiritual pressure perception is really at a cheater's level. I'm not omnipotent. I have simply scattered pieces of myself here and there throughout the Valley of Screams. Turning yourself into gas and making offshoots of your sensory organs sounds like cheating if I ever saw it. So what are you going to do now? If I attempt to assist them at the wrong time, I'll get dragged into things. I think it would be best to wait for a good while. What about Kisuke Urahara? Well... I apologize. Let's put that discussion on the back burner. What's wrong? It seems that our guest who arrived at the throne room has awakened. Let's head over there. It is surprising he would show up there right from the start. What an interesting person he is. Palace Courtyard. Your spiritual pressure has shot up in less than half a day. Yes, sir. It's because you were all kind enough to fight Ikomiki Domoe. Thank you so much for doing that. You're just like Kurosaki. You said you'd become the king, didn't you? Yes, sir. I see. And you really believe that? You may rest easy, young Arankar. I will eventually consume that brat, and I will make Waco Mundo mine to rule. Knew it. That's what it felt like. 
I don't know why you turned into a Zanpakuto, but you're the same as us. You claim we are the same. Do not be so conceited. Your ilk are far cry from those such as Baragon and me. You are nothing more than a starved beast that crawls in the desert. Looks like I made the right decision coming here after all. Grim Zhao honed his boiling spiritual pressure and walked right up to Ikomiki Domoe. I don't care what the hell you are. If you're standing in my way, I'll keep going until I kill and eat you. Let us go together, Grim Zhao. You shall become our king. When he took a step closer, his flesh would rankle. He saw Hikone as a pocket of nothingness whose existence carved a hole into the Kompaku of the world, and Ikomiki Domoe was an incarnation of avarice that struck that hole with a pressure that equaled Baragon's. We have come to the realization that we are not destined to rise above the level of Arucha. But you are meant for something far greater. Grim Zhao took another step. Thoughts of losing did not cross his mind, but he understood his opponents could send his head flying. However, he did not stop walking. He had no need to fight alongside the Soul Reapers, however he had still come. Tokenada only wanted to destroy the world because he wanted to see it happen, and while Grimjaw understood that he was an enemy, he did not think his desire was entirely foreign. Because Grimjaw knew that no matter how trivial the reason may seem, if it was something you had to do, then that was reason enough to make an enemy out of the world. And Grimjaw only had one reason to fight Hikone. But I'm the one who's going to become king. And I will make Wekomundo mine to rule. Devour us, Grimjaw. The part of his allies that had become his own flesh stirred Grim Zhao's instinct as a beast. It was because of his nature that Haribel did not call herself the King of Wekomundo, despite being its true ruler. She knew the moment she did, she'd have to fight Grim Zhao to the death. I won't let anyone deny me this! Grim Zhao condensed his spiritual pressure into his claws as he leapt at the monster. I'm the king!